Next, we're going to talk about fish sampling methods commonly used in Ohio. The most common method of fish collection is electrofishing. This is what we typically use when we're sampling our streams. There's three primary forms of collection with electrofishing, backpack, longline, and boat. We'll be focusing on the longline method. Other methods of collecting fish include seining and trap nets, as well as angling and fishing. Again, we're going to focus on shocking fish. So what is shocking fish? Uh, we're using electricity to temporarily stun fish before they are collected. We're not killing fish. Occasionally fish will die, but that's typically from handling stress, not from the electrical shock. When performed correctly, electrofishing results in no permanent damage to the fish, which return to their natural state in as little as a few minutes. Electrofishing relies on two electrodes, the anode and the cathode, which, which both must be in the water to complete the circuit. Delivers pulse direct current into the water, which stuns the fish. The way a fish's muscles are structured, when they get close enough to the electrical current, their muscles contract uncontrollably, and as their muscles contract, it forces them to swim forward straight towards the anode, which is actually the net, where when the electricity gets so strong, they pass out, float to the surface, they're collected and put in the live well where they very quickly recover. Galvanotoxic Toxis is the uncontrolled muscular convulsion that results in the fish swimming towards the anode. Back backpack electrofishing units are inexpensive, they're easy to move in and out of a stream, they can be used by a single person, you can hold both the anode and cathode in your hand, collect into a bucket. Fairly, fairly good way of collecting fish in a very small stream, but anything larger than, than this, a stream that's about your ankles deep, maybe four meters wide or so, other than that, it's not enough current to effectively shock a larger stream. This is not something that we use very often. Occasionally, students will use a backpack electrofishing unit if they need to collect data in a small stream. The long line is the most common method used in weightable streams in Ohio. Weightable streams are anything that we can get into in a pair of chest waders and safely get around and use the electrofishing unit. These are easy to use, they're very effective. A small crew is required, you only need about two or three people to get your equipment to the stream and conduct the sampling. The, the downsides, they are heavy, you're carrying a generator, often several hundred meters to the stream. Um, it's, sometimes it's hard to access the remote locations. They're pretty expensive, between five and seven thousand dollars. This is our focus, this is the method that we most commonly use it's uh, very, very flexible in application. You can use anything from a very small stream to any stream that you can get into and safely wade. The third method is the boat electrofishing unit. Same concept as the long line. You have your anode off of the boom in the front and your cathode is off of the boat. Both must be in the water to complete the electrical circuit. There's a generator on the boat. Your live well's on the boat and you motor through the stream, shocking all available habitat. This is very necessary in larger streams. Uh, anywhere that you cannot safely wave, you'll typically use the electrofishing boat. Some downsides, very expensive, about $15,000 to construct a complete electrofishing unit with the boat, the generator, all the electrical components. You do need a larger crew. Three is the bare minimum, five people is better. And access in our rural areas is pretty difficult. We don't typically have boat ramps. We're usually putting in on the edge of the stream where it's steep, rocky, and slippery. So this is, this is more, of a, more of a challenge, but definitely necessary in our larger streams. We're going to focus on the long line today. I want to talk a little bit about the components of the long line and the role of each person involved. So the components include a generator, which stays on the bank. This is a generator specifically designed for shocking fish, not the same generator you would use to power your refrigerator. The line is a 100 meter water resistant cord. The net actually acts as your anode. It's attached to the end of the cord. The cathode hangs off of the line about 
four or five meters behind the netter. The live well is where the fish go after they're shocked so that they can recover and be carried along until we're ready to process. And the assist nets. Typical protocol for an electrofishing site is 150 to 200 meters based on drainage area. Should take about 45 minutes to shock each site. This can vary a lot depending on the stream condition. If it's a site with just a straight sandy bottom, it would probably be pretty easy. You might get done with the site in 30 or 40 minutes. If it's a difficult site with a lot of woody debris, you're probably looking at closer to an hour, maybe even an hour and a half. You want to cover all of the habitat types. You won't be able to reach every single rock, every single stick, but you want to make sure you're getting a good representation of what's there. Boulders, uh, undercut banks, woody debris. Move quickly, but be thorough. You don't need to stay in one spot for an extended period of time. You want to be constantly moving so that the fish aren't getting around you. Constantly move through the area, sampling all the available habitat. Record accurate data. You want to make sure that your site data is recorded correctly, your researcher data is recorded correctly, and that you're accurately recording what species were found. Typically, you conduct two sampling passes on each site. If the site's less than 20 square miles, typically we only do one pass. You should pick a site that's representative of the reach. If most of the stream is a sandy bottom stream, and there's one section that has really great ripples, you don't want to select that one section with the really great rocky ripples, and that's not going to tell you what the entire stream is. You want to collect uh, fish samples at a site that represents what the entire reach looks like. There are a few different tasks when you're out electrofishing. The primary task is the netter. This is the person holding the anode, the net pole, there's a safety switch on the net pole. You're the one moving through the water, collecting the fish. The assist netter follows closely behind. This net is not attached to the generator. This is an independent fiberglass pulled net. The assist netter is close enough to the primary netter to get the fish from their net and put them into the live well. The more time the primary netter has their net out of the water, has less time that you actually are shocking fish. So they want to keep their net in the water at all times. Live well tender stays close behind, but far enough away that the fish in the live well are not getting shocked constantly. They want to be really careful. They're going to have to pull the live well over rocks, over logs, and keep the fish from getting out. Line tender, this is typically the most difficult position. Uh, a lot of our streams are very rocky, filled with lots of woody debris. That line tries to get tangled around everything it can. The line tender's job is to keep that 100 meters of line from tangling on debris so that the person netting is able to, to move freely without getting snagged up. Safety, it's really great to have an extra person up on the bank by the generator. In case anything would happen, that person can flip the switch on the generator and cut all electricity. And data recorder. Some safety things, we're always told that electricity and water don't mix, so we do follow quite a few Safety protocol, first and foremost, is don't touch the water. If you're not the person shocking, if you're not part of the crew, you should be out of the water. Anyone that is in the water is wearing rubber gloves. Typically, we have gloves that come almost up to our elbows so that if we accidentally reach in farther than we planned after a fish, the water does not overtop our gloves. Chest waders, want to make sure you have chest waders in good working condition. Waiter belts are a good idea in case water does go in your waders. It keeps it from going all the way in. A working safety switch. Right here where the orange is on the net pole, there's a magnetic safety switch. That switch has to be pressed down in order to be shocking. In theory, if the person who's netting falls, they'll let go of the net and take their hand off that switch and they'll cut the current. Look out for each other. You want to make sure that you're paying attention to the person who's shocking so that they're not going over their waders, not going to trip on a log. If you see a hazard, tell somebody. Someone trained to stop the generator. Again, it's really great to have someone on the bank, knows where the safety switch is, and can turn that generator off if anything happens. Take your hand off the switch. If you need to climb over a log, or if you're starting to slip down into a pool, you should take your hand off the switch. 
make sure observers stay out of the water. Good thing to know if you're doing demos. Kids get really excited. Students get really excited. They want to see what you're doing. They could easily trip and fall into the water. So make sure everybody's back at a safe distance. Watch for deep holes. Watch your elbows. If you're in deep water, it's really easy to put your elbows down and, and you'll get shocked. Processing. So once you've completed your reach, you've sampled 150 to 200 meters, you have all of your fish in the live well. We use white dishwashing pans because they're easy to, easy to carry, lightweight, cheap. You can see the fish in them. Typically sort everything out by species. Uh, count, weigh everything if the site is over 20 square miles. The processing might take longer than the actual shocking of the site. This is where you want to very accurately record all of your data. You want to make sure that you have all of the counts, all the weights, the site number recorded properly. Where you're at means as much as, as the data you collected. You want to know where this data is supposed to go. This is the conclusion of the fish sampling method.